All right. What's up, everybody? Welcome to episode two of Bard Acknowledge. Uh, two of what will be many eventually. Uh, if you were at the first one, welcome back. Thank you for coming back. If you are new, thanks for coming. Uh, glad to have you here. Uh, quick overview, if you don't know who we are, um, we are uh, TT2KB, so we are Tabletop to Keyboard, this is our channel, we are basically a bunch of friends that have a channel here, we do a bunch of different content. This specific content is going to be Bardic Knowledge, which is basically music composing for Tabletop RPGs. So uh, the guys in the group here have, again, they've charged me to do this, um, I think it's great. I am having a lot of fun with it so far, even off camera as well as on camera. Um, but uh, yeah, having a lot of fun doing it. Gonna gonna get started with it. So uh, my name is Cam. If I didn't say that before, um, I'll be walking you through this. Uh, last time we did a little bit more. It's kind of an intro, so we did a little bit more of like guitar, bass, drums, synthesizer, kind of more rock metal type of things. Uh, which is cool, and we're going to be integrating that from time to time. However, um, we're going to be doing more of an orchestral kind of grandiose type of theme. So, um, like I said before in the previous stream, this is going to be more along the lines of the feel of like what you would hear in the background of a Lord of the Rings or Game of Thrones or even something of a different genre that has just got this kind of orchestral fanfares and things like that behind it. So... That's what we're going to be doing. Uh, so, fun things. Uh, last time we talked about a bunch of instruments that I've got here. Uh, not only physical instruments that I've got around here, but also uh, the digital instruments that I have with keyboard um, that I'm able to play through there. Uh, this week, uh, it just so happens that the company that I was talking all super great about, um, Spitfire Labs, uh, I found out that they actually have some of their... Uh, instrument libraries that are, I guess, they used to be their primary, uh, used to be their their main uh, product, but since then they've come up with new libraries, new instruments, so they actually took all those old ones and they packaged them together and they made them super affordable. So they sound so good, I could not pass them up, so I actually have some new instruments to play with today. Um, so I bought, uh, both of these were $29 a piece. Um, one was uh, orchestral strings, um, and what's really cool, I'm going to go through kind of how they work here in a minute, but um, not only are they super rich and realistic and just amazing sounding, they've got all the dynamics, they've got, you know, long tones, short tones, like anything you can imagine. Um, so we've got that in strings. I've also got one that was brass and woodwind combined. So I was having a really hard time finding any brass and woodwind instruments um, that were free. <laughs> I couldn't find any that I thought really, really sounded good. I found a few out there, but they were kind of, eh, I won't name any anybody by name, but uh, for free, they were fine, but I certainly wouldn't put out a product with it. Um, so now I have what I consider to be a fantastic sounding set. Um, we are going to be going through a little bit of that real quick so we can see how it sounds. So let's go over to that. All right. So we've got, actually, let me look at the chat here. That was my big problem last time. I did not look at the chat. I'm going to keep an eye on the chat this stream, make sure everybody is getting questions answered and all those sorts of things. So let's see here. Just making sure and welcome everyone again. Leviathan, Air Laser, War Poodle. Uh, I saw Tay was in here. Uh, looks like Dustin's in here. Animal G's in here. So thank you guys for coming. Um, okay, so first I'm going to be showing, uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm going to try to multitask. It's not going to be easy, Rain. Um, so we're going to start with our strings. So probably like you saw last time, that's really big. Uh, so this is similar to the setup that I had last time, different colors, but you can tell it's definitely the same company. Um, but there's more options here now. So I have like reverb, release, tightness. Um, there's different microphones um, for when they took these samples. So you can do like the big room mic, you can do um, like a close where it was actually just on the instruments mic. So super cool. Um, let's hear how some of these sound. So this is, they call it strings live. So this is more of like um, 
just uh, as they are, there's no specific like articulation on these, but these are. But what's really neat is they've got the different articulations here, so you can go. really smooth or you can really a little bit of the articulation in there uh, so that's the one that's considered live now this one is considered short so it's basically the same instrument same samples um, except uh, this is all short staccato so so I'm I literally I'm pressing and holding a note but it's it's stopping so it's really great for Or if you want to do some like comps. So kind of neat things like that. Definitely going to be using both of those tonight. I'm actually going to be using all of these tonight, but those two incarnations of it specifically. Uh, same thing. Now we've got brass. So if you can't see, I'm going to move my mouse around a little bit here. So, uh, so we've got the uh, brass here, which again, you can play kind of soft. Or you can, so you can get that really kind of black, big sound. Um, I didn't demonstrate this on the strings because the stringed instruments, while all, you know, contrabass to cello to viola to violin, they all do sound different, but they are all in essence the same instrument, but bigger and smaller. So they do kind of sound very similar as you go up and down. But what's really cool is that without changing patches here, um, on the brass especially, I can be up here, which is clearly like trumpets, or I can get down here in the middle. Which is more like trombone, French horn, that sort of thing. Or I can get really very like tuba or Probably bass trombones and that sort of thing. Very kind of cool, big things. And again, you can play really soft, play really loud. Uh, so really cool. Um, again, short, same thing. Trumpets up the top, but all short staccatos all the way down. So really cool there. And the last one that came with this set were the woodwinds, which again, strings kind of similar all the way up top to bottom. The brass less similar, but still kind of similar in sound, but the woodwinds can be very different. So example at the top, clearly like a flute or I can even go piccolos. Then once you get down in the middle, those are clarinets now, which is really cool. And then you can get down to like the bass clarinets or contra bass clarinets. So really cool there. Um, these percussions did not come with it. Uh, this is another company called, I actually don't remember what they're called. I think they're called Big Cat. Um, this one is cool. I would like to find another one to supplement this sometime in the future, but lots of different, I mean, let's see if I can find them. Oh, I got to turn them on here, but lots of different like percussion sounds. If I can get these to go Oh, hold on one second. I forgot to set this. I forgot to set where we're getting this sound from. There we go. Mm. What did I do? <laughs> I broke it. Well, either way, we will figure that out in the future. <laughs> I don't know what I did, but that's okay. Uh, let me see if maybe I can do this one down here. Uh, inputs. Hmm. Technical difficulties, I'm sorry. So sorry. Yeah, that's all right, we'll deal with those later. We'll go back to these for now because these are super fun. All right, so 
So what I kind of want to start with tonight, talk about a little bit of sort of music theory, but not really music theory. Uh, it's kind of basic stuff, but it is things that you've heard a million times. Um, you just probably didn't know it. And it, on the surface, it feels like it's something that would not work except for very, very specific situations. So normally if you want to do something, let's say I'm going to write a song and, or a piece, and I want it to sound happy or jovial or something like that. Um, I'm going to be using what would be like a major scale. So, uh, if you ever heard doe a deer, a female deer, the, so kind of happy sounding. I'm going to switch this to a different instrument real quick. Actually, I'm going to do all the instruments at once. So kind of a happy, fun sound, um, which does not include this note. So if this is your bass, this is the idea you're in, and then you put in this note, clearly lots of tension there. So what that is, is a flat fifth or a sharp fourth, which is known as a tritone. So very sinister, very maybe like horror film type of thing um, or confusing or something like that. So um, that happens a lot in a lot of music, but uh, most people don't realize it when it does. Um, tritone is so like, I don't want to say gross because it's not gross, but it's like so much tension, so weird and so off-putting that back in like medieval times, it was actually outlawed, <laughs> believe it or not. So if you were a composer and you wrote a tritone at any point in your in your music, even if it was part of a chord or whatever, like they would punish you by capital punishment. It was it was bad for some reason. They hated it. And then eventually people got over it. And all of a sudden, all this amazing music happened because you have this extra tension note you can add here. So uh, so uh, what a lot of times what people will do, even though this is a gross type of note, Adding that note to a major scale and subtracting what would be the normal number fourth key uh, and adding this as the fourth key instead, uh, it's called a well, it's called a Lydian mode. But what it does is it actually is it's like more major than major, so it's actually more uh, like happy fanfare. So. Oh. Especially when you have these two notes together. instead of so it can be used in really interesting ways reason I'm bringing it up I am going to be using it in what I'm doing tonight uh, but I wanted to show you some examples of what this is or when it's used in things I'm sure almost all of you are going to know at least one of these things that I'm going to show you here so uh, I'm going to start with the maybe I think they're all pretty obvious but I'm putting them out there, so it may just be Eye of the Beholder there. Um, so uh, I'm gonna kind of play a couple things that you probably recognize, and if you do, put them in the chat. I'll give you a few seconds to kind of put them in there. So uh, what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna play that tritone in the key, the proper key of what we're gonna be playing so you can kind of hear the notes and hear how, uh, no copyrights, don't worry about it, it's not gonna be a problem. It's it's recreation. I'm covered under uh, there's a there's a clause about uh, covering songs, so I can do that. Don't worry about it. I checked it. <laughs> uh, so anyway, so we're gonna be having this tritone. It's pretty uh, pretty intense there. I'm actually gonna take the brass out of that for what we're doing here, but we do it again here. Okay, so now that you have that sound in your head, we're gonna we're gonna make it work. Anybody recognize that? I'm sure at least somebody does. Uh, think about that's that's actually a John Williams um, big one. Um, that's true. Rain's got it, but there we go. Somebody named it by name. Jurassic Park. So that's the Jurassic Park theme. And again, you've got these, these gross kind of tritone in here, but if you put them together properly, it 
So pretty cool. Um, kind of do things like that with this tritone, even though it's like this, you know, um, cause again, a lot of times like, like this is used in really heavy stuff. Like if anybody remembers the beautiful people by uh, Marilyn Manson, it's going to sound really funny, but, uh, cause it's not going to be in a guitar, but, uh, all right. So, you know, things like that. It's kind of this gross sound. Uh, thanks, Animal G. Subscribing. Appreciate it. Uh, so, anyway, I'm going to go to another one here. I got to remember. Yeah, okay. So, I got it. Sorry. Uh, so, again, I feel like most people are going to recognize this one too. But, again, put it in the chat when you do. Um, here is the tritone that we're working with. So again, kind of this gross thing, but when you put it in a proper thing, like this is a, this is a real like kind of fanfare type of feel. So anybody recognize that one? Yeah. See, you guys are quick. There it is. Back to the future. So again, you've got this gross thing uh that's actually not john williams believe it or not um that one is alan silvestri i had to look that up i thought it was a uh i thought it was a williams as well but still iconic 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 fanfare so um last one um this one uh i i'm certain everybody will recognize absolutely certain uh so we're gonna be working with this tritone. I'll give you a preview. So maybe you can get it from that, but if you didn't. Oops. Uh, I had to remember how to play it. Yep. Oops. Also, I play it in the right key, but yes, again, really nasty. That one's actually really famous because they play it in order. So uh, it's uh, it's you know pretty cool that those things can be implemented in, even though on the surface it sounds like it should never work. So we're actually going to be working with that today. So. I, over the week, was thinking, okay, what are we going to work with? What are we going to make? What am I going to play? What am I going to write? So uh, I was thinking about we're going to go orchestral, but what I want to do is I want to write themes for everyone's character at some point. So I figure why not start here? Um, I think what we're going to do after some consultation with Rain Survives and Crazy Ike, I think, were the two I was talking to about this. Um, initially, I was going to do the show where I just each show is going to be, um, you know, just creative process, create a new thing every time, just put down ideas and kind of work on it later. But they suggested and recommended, and I agree now that I've been convinced um, that they think that I should dedicate maybe a few shows in a row to the same piece, uh, building it kind of front to back. So, uh, so what we're going to be doing here uh, is we're going to be writing a piece for the different characters. I didn't do this on purpose. It just so happened to be the uh, the melody I was writing. And Rain Survives, when I kind of pitched it to him, he was like, ooh, that sounds like it should be more Gaines theme. So even though it's my character, apparently I'm starting with my own theme <laughs> because it works. Uh, initially, I'd set out to write like a theme for... Uh, the ship that we're all on in our Everstorm, uh, our D&D game, uh, the Sarah's Grit. Um, but it was a little... Well, after I wrote it, I was like, ah, it's not as kind of epic and driving as I wanted it to be, but it's going to end up working out, I think, for a Morgane uh, theme. So, uh, so yes, I know, narcissistic. Look at this guy. I get it. I get it. However, I'll have you know that I've been putting work in on other ones because if I try to write all the music for this uh, this game, this Everstorm game on the stream, it will literally never get done. So I am writing others off. I actually have a really good start on a Kodo theme, which I think he will like. Uh, actually, I hope everyone likes it, but 
it feels very Kodo to me. So uh, we're already working on some of those. I'm still still thinking. I got some ideas for Balrin uh, as well. Still trying to work on what I'm going to do with Fulcrum, what I'm going to do with Skeezer. Uh, not sure. The The Fulcrum one's going to be going to be hard, I think, because I really would like to capture the light and dark side of him. And now he's a captain, so pff, you got to have a proper song for Captain Fulcrum. Um, and then Skeezer is a little bit of an enigma, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to make sure what I make is appropriate for the character. So I have a little thinking to do on that one. But anyway, I digress. So for today, we are going to be working on more gains theme, uh, believe it or not. So what I'm going to be working with is I'm going to start with strings. So I'm going to go with short strings because what I had written is definitely kind of staccato, quick, uh, quick moving and things like that. So. Uh, so this part I kind of came up with beforehand, but after this, it's all going to be, let's make stuff up and put it together. So, uh, so let's, uh, I'll play you what I had going. So what I was going to do is something like this, if I can remember how to do it. So, uh, nope, not like that. So that's what I was kind of do, kind of like I'm using that tritone we talked about earlier. So uh, I'm gonna be kind of doing that. It feels kind of exciting, adventurous. Um, if you did watch our latest EverStorm game, we've got a new uh, intro for the game. And in the intro, all of our characters, we all say the reason why we left on the Sarah's Grit. So uh, I'm gonna try to take that idea um, of all those like keywords that all of us said were the reason we left. And I want to try to write the pieces based on that keyword. So uh, Morgane's word was for adventure. And to me, that sounds very much like if you were, <laughs> if you were watching a film and somebody was out running through a field, going on an adventure, whatever, that feels very fitting for that. So uh, I'm going for adventure. So now I have to make sure I can play it correctly and track it. That's <laughs> the fun part. So we're going to put that down here. Let's see. All right. So let me, it's funny. As soon as I start a stream, everybody wants to text me. So, <laughs> all right. So uh, I'm going to start here. We're going to start and we're going to get the click going. So make sure that's working. Okay, good. All right, so let's see. Okay, I can read, I can see, it's just really small, I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, so here we go. Ha, I screwed it up already. The joys of not actually playing the keyboard. <laughs> All right, here we go. All right, I definitely played an incorrect note in there. Let's find it. Uh, actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to quantize this because I do not play the keyboard as my main instrument, so... I do not play things super cleanly, so Quantize is going to help me put everything in line uh, properly so it sounds like I kind of know what I'm doing. So, that was the wrong note already, I think. Let's make sure that was the right one. There we go. Yep, see, I hit the wrong note again. Let's put it back in there great part is you can go back and you can fix everything. Wonderful. All right. So that worked. Um, so similar to what we were doing last time where we were using the, um, the this is called the piano roll um, to put in the drum beats. 
Um, so uh, this is the same type of thing, except now it's with instruments and it's not with the drums like we did before. Um, all the colors you can kind of see here, they're all varied. Uh, they're all basically based on velocity. So how hard did I hit, um, hit all the notes as I was playing them? So um, again, because I'm not a super accurate uh, keyboard player, some of these are kind of way out uh, way louder than others. So you see these ones that are bright red. Uh, I'm actually going to turn all those down because they're way out. So we're going to turn them down a little bit. Let's I still want them to be loud and punchy, but I don't want them to be so in your face that it hurts. Okay, we do have a couple in here that are a little quiet, so they actually almost turn into ghost notes, and I do not want that. I want them to, don't have to be loud, but I don't want them to be super, super quiet, so I'm going to bring those all up just a little bit, just to even things out. Let's see if that sounds a little better. It's getting there. It's uh, still some of these are a little outside where I want them to be. Uh, but yeah, Levi can do it. Just say whatever you want. I'll read it eventually. Don't worry about it. <laughs> anyway, uh, I am, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab all of these notes. I'm going to try to find the loudest ones. Let's see probably like this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to max those out, but I'm going to bring everything else with it. So what that's going to do is going to bring, keep the same dynamic differences, but it's going to bring everything more intense. So Oh, my quantize didn't stick, that's why. That's better. Let's, let's try this again. All right, pretty good. There's still a few in here that are a little quiet, so sometimes the editing process is a little bit tedious, but I think that's good enough for now. Um, so what I want to do, let me see, I'm probably going to repeat that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shrink this down, copy this. I'm going to make another copy, put it right after it, and then I'm going to line them up appropriately. So uh, Not sure if that's quite right. Let's see here. Mm. Let's see what it sounds like. I think I'm yeah, missing a beat there, so. Mm. Let's see. Something's going on here. I'm not sure what it is yet. So that needs to overlap. That's the problem. Okay. Maybe I need to zoom in farther. Let's get more on here. Let's see if I can make this into 16th notes. That might allow me to do it. No, let's see. Hmm, let's try it this way. Here's what we'll do. Delete that. We will bring this in. We will copy, paste, bring that note back. Oops. Hmm. 
Hmm. Well, this is like on a weird offbeat for some reason. I don't know why it's doing that. Well, we'll figure it out. Let me see maybe what I can do is I will re-record it and see if maybe I can get it to listen to what I want it to do. So, <laughs> all right, let's make sure I'm not missing anything super important here. While everyone's talking crap to me, it's totally cool. No big deal. All right, so, all right. Bruce Dickinson, holy cow. Okay. All right, so let's see here. Do, 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 do. That finishes there. So really all I need is another note here in reality. Okay, so what I can do, chop that note. And let's see if I can get these to align a little better there. I think I may have got it. I could have done it. Let's make sure. There we go. Now they're rolling together. Okay. Cool. So we're going to repeat that twice. And so what I think I'm going to do is I want to kind of modulate that down a little bit. So. Uh, I don't want it to be like happy fanfare the whole time. I want to create some tension. So I'm going to do, so basically right now we're kind of in C. I think I'm going to step it down. So I think we're going to step down to a B here. So it's a half step, but I still want to use a lot of these same notes. So, and kind of the same ideas. Uh, so let's actually move these back down where they belong. Um, I'm going to make a copy of this. So by making a duplicate here, what I can do is I can kind of use this like scratch paper. So um, I can go ahead and make something down here and then move it back up to my main piece afterwards um, just to kind of place it where I want to place it. So let's try it out here. Actually, I'm going to play this so I have a little bit of a beat to actually no let's, let's figure this out first so I guess we should arm our track too so we're gonna go down to down to B nope. yeah there we go so yeah so that's what we'll do uh, so again basically I'm doing very similar things I'm actually using a lot of the same notes as their first part then I'm and again I'm using it's almost the same rhythms and everything too so so That'll be cool. Let's uh, let's put that one down. All right, that'll be cool. Let's zoom in and make sure we cut this off at the appropriate spot. Same thing here. All right, so now I can move that back up here so I can get it to line up, unlike the last one. I think that actually worked. Actually, let's make sure we quantize this since I'm not super accurate at playing things. Hmm, that's really strange. This thing is not doing what I want it to do today. Let's make it work. Cross that to eighth notes. There we go. Now, but that sounds right. 
Except I muted it, so I can't hear it. Let's try it. There we go. All right, so let's move that in here. Should line up nicely. Cool. I like that. And so we move from C to B. I'm going to move it down another step. I'm going to go down to A. So, so I'm going to try to, again, I'm going to try to use similar notes and a similar melody. So that way there's, there's familiarity in it, um, even though it's changing. So that way, you know, a lot of times in music, especially if you really pay attention to things, when things change, everything doesn't change all at once. Sometimes it does because they're trying to get a really abrupt effect, but a lot of times you'll notice even when the notes change, the rhythm will stay the same. Or sometimes the rhythm will change, but the notes will stay the same. And then there's this, uh, it's kind of this familiarity, so it helps you bridge a gap to a new thing you're going to. So um, that's kind of what I'm doing here. I'm using, using rhythm as kind of the glue and the familiarity piece while I'm changing, I mean, tonalities entirely. Like the, the first part is very like happy. And then all of a sudden we're kind of very minor, kind of solemn, kind of mysterious type sounding. Um, so now we're gonna go to A. Okay, so we can go to... Yeah, there we go. All right, I like that one. Let's put that one down. All right. Start it off strong. Let's try that again. <laughs> nope. What was I doing? That's what we're doing. Let's get that one recorded. All right, that will work. Let's trim that one up too. Let's put it up here and layer it in. Make sure it sounds correct. That works. Uh, I think I'm gonna go down one more, uh, one more step. Reason I'm gonna do that, um, again, just from my own musical knowledge and from some theory that I know, that I know that we started with C, that is gonna make these kind of happy sounds. G is the fifth of that. So I know once I get back to G, it's gonna be more, it's kind of that happy tone again. So I kind of wanna bring it back to that and then bring it back up so all right let's see i'm sorry I'm, I'm trying really hard to keep an eye on this chat today so forgive me uh let's see da, 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 da. we're talking about languages nice all right so let's see here so let's uh let's let's go to g Yeah, I like that. Mm. Yeah, that's what we'll do. Start back at the beginning. Oops, wrong note. 
You guys are really seeing how good I am at playing this keyboard right now. See? Wrong notes again. Welcome to the creative process. This is how it works. <laughs> that horribly out of time but we can fix that with technology let's see it actually I played it so out it actually threw some of these notes in the wrong place so let's fix that let's see here Let's take a look. <laughs> All right, I did that so poorly, I'm actually just gonna do it again. That was pretty bad. <laughs> All right, let's try it again. That way we'll just start with a better palette here, so. All right, that should be better. Let's quantize that. See how it's, oops, adding extra notes that I didn't mean to. Okay, that'll work. Stop, trim it, and I'll put it at the end. Make sure it works. Let's see what it sounds like. The transition, that is. Mm. Something funky is going on there. Let's see what it is. Oh, I didn't quantize this one. That's probably why. Let's see here. Let's fix it. Okay. Get that one. Let's put it back in where it's supposed to go. All right, I'm going to make sure these transitions are working correctly. That one's right. That'll work. Okay. So I've gone down some. I feel like it's time to return back. So now we're doing... So I think I'm gonna go back to the, the B, which is right before, so we can lead right back into the C. So. I don't even actually have to play that again. I can cheat because I'm composing. So <laughs> we're gonna just copy the time we did it. Let's make sure this is the right one. Yep, that's it. Put it over here. Slide it into place. See how that sounds. What's going on here? That'll work. And then we're going to bring back the original one. So we're going to bring back the happy sounding. Just push that right in there. That'll work. So I th think, I think that's going to work. Let's see what it sounds like. We're going to play it all together while I read the chat. <laughs> Turn the click off. 
Jesus. I think I like that. Uh, I think I played, so this first part I think was played too many times. So I'm gonna actually delete one of those and I'm gonna put these together here. So that way, whoops, should grab all of those. So that way I can make the whole thing a little shorter without having to re play the entire thing. Let's so make sure that works. Okay, perfect. Okay, so I like how that is going. Um, I think what I'm hearing that should go underneath that are like some, like almost like some stabs, like some jump, jump, like big, just like, I'm definitely gonna use the short strings for this here, so. Um, See how low we should go. <laughs> All right, let's play around with this a little bit, see how it goes. Okay, I think we will do that. However, before I do that, remember earlier I fixed some of the velocities on our first um, first one there. What is going on? Google Voice is trying to type everything I say. All right, so I'm gonna bring some of these down so that they're a little more even. Then I'm gonna grab everything and I'm gonna bring it up for intensity. I'm gonna do that with all these new sections that I wrote. So let's grab these notes. Ooh. Bring it down just a little, and then we'll grab them all and we will bring them up. Okay. Same thing here. Actually, no. It's a couple of these loud ones. Let's knock those down. Knock them down a peg or two, like we did. Knock down a peg or two in our Everstorm game. Not even a dad, but I got dad jokes. All right, so let's see here. <laughs> oh, he's, DM Levi is not sour about it at all. Not even a little. All right, so we brought all those up. I think this one was already up. So now we should have a little bit more 
the, the volumes and velocities should be a little better here. Yes, that's, that is much better, so. Okay, so now we can go back to what I was doing with the... Probably some of these lower notes. All right, let's see how this goes. So I'm going to cut that there since that's where it changes to the more minor feel. So I'm going to record that separately. So that way, since I, again, not a good keyboard player, I can do this without having to screw everything up and try to do it 800 times over. <clears throat> All right. So I think we're going to do... That will work, so let's give it a go. All right, now we're into a new sound entirely, so let's put this one together up here. Actually, I'm going to quantize all these because, again, I'm not good at keyboards, so we make sure everything is lined up. And that way, see, you can see how far off I was on all of these. <laughs> so we can quantize those and put them right on the beats. So that way it sounds like I know what I'm doing. All right, put those together. So now we come back to this part. I'm actually going to loop this because... I'm not sure which one to play under this right now, so let's let's play around with it a little bit here and see what happens. do that one the second one which is actually more major sounding but I think it's gonna create a little um, create a little tension uh, plus it's gonna go back to this sound afterwards so we're gonna see how that works see how it sounds we'll try it out here so let's make sure that one's muted all right let's let's try it out see what happens Okay, that's going to change back. And I played a little extra note because I got fat fingered. So let's get rid of that little note there. The wonders of technology. Let's quantize all of that. Actually, I think I got to get rid of these because we're going to be going to have a new part after that. So. Let's do this, do that, put these together. And we're actually going back to that kind of sinister minor sounding one. So I'm just gonna copy that and bring it over. Again, for composition's sake, I think that's gonna work. That way I can write it out and then I can kind of tweak it later if I wanna do it a little bit different. And then since we come back to the beginning here, I'm gonna grab that. And I'm going to put it back over here. So now 
let's listen to it. We should have that with the accompaniment here. So let's see what it sounds like. All right, I can already tell I need to bring this these notes up in volume. So let's grab all these. We want this to be kind of a really hard accented hit. So I'm going to make sure it's bringing the pain. All right, this one's already pretty good, but eh, we'll just bring some of these up just so that way we get a little bit more of that scary, I guess, effect to it. So let's do these, bring these up. So I hope, if anything, this this stream here is going to show you if even if you're not like a virtuosic piano player or even if I mean honestly you don't even have to know how to really play an instrument super well, um, but you can get in and you can actually start playing around with these programs and just experimenting and you would be surprised how gratifying it is just coming up with something that didn't exist before or even like if you can find a melody of something you already know and you just start putting it together um it's it's a lot of fun and i mean a lot of people can get lost in video games for hours um this is very similar like you can get lost doing this like i've sat and just started writing and <laughs> I could sit down and all of a sudden it's three hours later. I'm like, what happened? I don't even know where's going on here. So um, it's a lot of fun. So uh, so let's go back now that I've fixed that, see what it sounds like. that's coming along um so i think that is going to be a good that's going to be obviously we've got the melody and we've kind of got the chord structure underneath it so it's going to be a really good bass layer so i think what i want to do is i want to start layering um right now all we've done is strings so um especially for some of these these kind of stab hits underneath um, I think brass is going to be really useful for that. So I'm going to switch to our brass sounds. So I'm going to see, let's see what we can do here. Let's actually copy all of this. Let's just duplicate it and see what that sounds like, adding that kind of extra layer to it. already like that so <laughs> I think what I might do is I actually might go ahead and add the woodwinds doing the exact same thing um, let's see what that sounds like as the woodwinds just by itself here because these are this is probably going to be in the lower range so it's probably going to be like um, that like bass clarinet type of sound um, so let's see what that goes for here whoops uh, actually, that's not even in bass clarinet range yet. I think that's just low clarinets at this point. So, but it's nice. It gives that kind of articulated, that kind of that a little bit of a honk. And if you've ever played a woodwind instrument, clarinet, saxophone, whatever, 
especially or ever been around kids when they're first learning, <laughs> you will know that that's the first thing they do is they, they get the instrument and they just honk as loud as they can. And obviously this is much more controlled and using it as a real effect, but that's really something that you can do with a woodwind instrument. So, um, so let's see what it all sounds like together now that we got some layers on that bass part there. So. <laughs> So you notice we're getting a pretty good honk <laughs> out of the uh, the clarinets here on that part. So I'm actually going to bring this whole section down just a little bit. Now what's interesting too is because this was all, like all these samples were recorded from, you know, live instruments from people actually playing them. Like certain, like each note will sound slightly different like a real player. So some of them will honk a little more than others because that's just what is... Kind of sympathetic vibration of the instrument is so let's see if that's a little better a little bit here so let's bring those down that's a little better let's make sure that sounds better here okay I'm, I'm digging that. I'm digging that. So let's see here. So I feel like we need to add some interesting layers to this here. So kind of a cool way to do that. I'm going to listen to the string part again here by itself. <laughs> So I think what I might do is, so we'll go through the whole series of the changes there once, but I think what I might do is, let's kind of go through this series a little bit again, but a little bit differently. So I'm actually gonna, I'm gonna do a little copy paste <laughs> composing here and, uh, Actually, I can grab all these, can't I? Let's see here. Ooh, it's longer than I wanted it to be. Uh, so this, and again, this is just because I've done this a number of times <laughs> with other things that I know that I can get away with this. So, oops, let's undo whatever we just did. All right. Oh, I lost everything. Where did it all go? There it is. Oh, what did I do? Okay, so undo. Let's grab everything I want to grab here. So this, 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 this. Oops, not this one. Okay, so let's copy all of those and cheat and put them all over here <laughs> so i think i can get rid of that note i'm actually going to shrink some of these because i think i did this last time this is just again i'm not changing anything here i'm just making these smaller so they can all kind of appear on the screen at once and i can place them a little easier so now I can grab all these, slide them back into place here. Just gonna bring that around and then let's actually do this. 
see where that goes real quick. That would sound really cool if I did a different bass part under it. So let's let's get rid of that one, that one, and that one. And let's put these under there instead. See what that sounds like. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Okay. Then we're going to bring it back to the first part because you always have to return to the theme. So let's put that there. Line it up. Make sure it works. Okay. Good transition. Okay, so now I've extended my song a little bit, um, but what I'm going to do is we kind of go through the whole cycle the first time, and then we come back to that main part again. Uh, so I think what I want to do is I want to add a layer of basically the same melody, but I'm going to do it up an octave, and that's going to bring some difference in like some kind of tension, not maybe tension, but like um, some excitement to it. So what I'm going to do is I want to make that in woodwinds. So I'm going to duplicate the woodwind track we have. Oh, actually, I don't need to do. Oh, no, I do need to do that. But I duplicated the wrong one. So let's duplicate the woodwinds short. Get rid of all that stuff. And we're going to put all these things in here. Make sure they lined up correctly. Okay. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to raise all of these a whole octave. So be prepared for things to sound really funny for a second. So let me get this lined up right. Okay. Let's do the same thing here. Grab all of these, bring them up a whole octave. Let's see, so we're up to A. And same thing with this one. It's composition for dummies. <laughs> I'm not great at this, but you can make something that sounds cool. So, all right. So let's kind of hear how it transitions here now. So this will be still part of the first section going into the second section. think what I might do I might duplicate this I might put it in the strings instead maybe I'll do both but for now I think maybe taking the strings up an octave whoa what did I do there we go okay maybe taking the strings up an octave could be more effective let's see what it sounds like <laughs> Definitely more. 
are exciting. <laughs> Okay, I might actually, maybe I'll do both the strings and the woodwinds. Let's see what that, let's see if that works. I do like how that works. However, because it is now in a higher register, <laughs> it comes through much louder. So I'm actually going to reduce back down some of the volume or the velocity on that. So it, oof, so it doesn't penetrate my eardrum quite so hard. Let's see here. Okay, so let's see if that's a little less harsh. That's definitely better, uh, but I think we're gonna do, since I already adjusted this one, it's the same line, I'm gonna bring this down here. So that way the woodwinds aren't quite so loud too, because those flutes can really like, you know, get up, like get up really high. They can really, they can really be loud. So let's uh, let's see if that's better. enjoying that so I think that is gonna be good I think that's a very good like that's kind of our theme right there so we're definitely gonna have to move through some other parts um, for a piece because basically what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be writing these so that they can be uh, so these might end up being like while we're running scenes with our characters it could be this could be the combat music I don't know we haven't quite figured out what we're gonna do with this yet but the chances of it only playing through once are pretty slim. <laughs> so I want to be able to make something that can be repeated uh, over and over and over again. You know, if someone's running a scene for 40 minutes. Um, so basically what I'll eventually do, this won't all happen this evening, but eventually I'll probably write a four to six minute piece that cycles around, that can cycle around in itself and be repeated. So that way for the listeners or even for us hearing it, it's not going to get super, super boring and hearing the same thing over and over again. So I'll be working on that in the future. Maybe touch on that a little bit tonight. But I think what I want to do is try to see if I can integrate some percussion into this. Now, percussion's always... I don't know. Percussion for me, like in a, like a combo band type of scenario, guitar, bass, and drums, like that I always have a great... Like I have a good ear for hearing like what I think a drum should be doing, even if it's not exactly what it is, like something going on. Like, okay, I got an idea of what this should be like, but it's always harder for me on stuff like this. So uh, definitely going to take a little experimenting, especially when, when you're talking about orchestral 
percussion. I mean, there's a billion things. So uh, it, there's a lot, a lot, a lot that can be done here. So let's see if I can get this to work like before, because for some reason it was not working earlier. So let's see what's going on here. I may just have to make a new track entirely. Maybe there's something wrong with that one. So let's say, let's just do this. MIDI all channels. All right, MIDI's working. Let's put, uh, let's put a percussion in there. Oh, that one works. Let's just delete these since they don't want to work for me today. So let's make this percussion and let's make it a different color so it's easier to see. I like red, let's make it red. And then I forgot about these and I remembered before the uh, before I started today that there are icons in this system too. So you can put a little icon to just kind of quick quick look at something and kind of know what you're what you're looking at so now when i have this i see drum i can immediately be like oh yeah i'm working on drums right now so all right uh we haven't actually played with this one before so i'm gonna kind of show you what some of these sound like so this is a whole wide array so like really ones that be used a lot are going to be like bass drums um snare or tenor drum Tenor drum is basically just a snare drum without the snare turned on. So if you've ever played with a snare drum, basically it's a drum. It's got a head on the top and the bottom. And then there's like these kind of long strips, little metal strips on the underneath. And that's what gives it that, that rap, that, that raspiness. Otherwise, if you turn that snare off, that's the sound you get. So it's, they just call it a tenor drum, but it's the same thing. Um, it's cool here too, because you can do one touch rolls, like literally one button and I got a roll here so um, so maybe play with that but then there's also you can kind of see on the screen there they're color coded so like all the yellow ones here these are all symbols got a nice long symbol rolls here if you want this is the blue one sorry let's see oh the those are the bass drums because there's actually more down here I don't even know what that is. Uh, all right, so then I've got timpani here, which I feel like could be good. I just don't, I don't know what to do with them yet. So timpani roll. All right, so let's play around with these a little bit. Um, one thing that is crazy about these is there's no reverb on them so to get a true like concert hall type feel you really want to so you notice reverb if you don't know what that is it's like it's not echo but it's like the difference between me sitting in a room here and if i clap my hands there's like a little bit of the sound bounces around but if i were to go into like the sanctuary of a church and i clap my hands you're gonna get that big like boomy sound so it's the same that would be like if I'm sitting in a small room or if I was in a big cathedral hall so we're gonna give some of that reverb to make it sound good okay so let's see I don't really know what to do with this yet so I'm just gonna kind of play around a little bit and see see what I can come up with
right, so far I think I like the, like when it's going to a new section and it's, it's got the roll into a snap. So I think I'll be probably putting that in there. Um, I would like to integrate some sort of like some sort of snare type thing there, but I don't quite know what I'm going to do yet. So Maybe something along those lines now. I'm using the touchpad here on the, it's hard to see here on my keyboard, but I've actually got like four, or I'm sorry, eight touchpads on the side, so I'm trying to use those. Um, unfortunately, the touchpads on this keyboard, for whatever reason, are, the sensitivity is really funky, and I've never taken the time to kind of adjust it, so it's like, it's, it's, you can do it, but it doesn't doesn't always pick up every hit because you have to hit it kind of hard. So you notice sometimes the sometimes the hits don't come in. Anyway, so we're going to try it out and the nice thing is is we can kind of play it. If we miss a note here and there it doesn't come through, we can just kind of add it in. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Actually, I don't even know who's who's running the TT2KB right now. Is that Dustin? Maybe? I don't know. Um, anyway, if, if it is, he, he's saying here that he would assume the music started with drums. Um, yeah, I mean, there's no wrong way to do this. Like, I've started plenty of things with drums. I've started with guitar. I've started with, oh, I, I got a bass line that I like. It's, you know, there's... Anything can be the seed, you know, it's just whatever, whatever you're hearing in your head, you're like, ooh, I like that. The key is to get it down or start thinking about it and then adding on to it. So, you know, if you were making something and you were going to start with drums, that's perfectly viable way of doing it. You can absolutely do that, especially if, you know, you come up with some interesting drum thing that that's just been stuck in your head. And you're like, hey, you know what, I'm going to get that down. And then you start layering on top of it perfectly good way of making music too so no right or wrong way to do it all right so let's see let's see what we can do here i think i'm going to try to do the just the regular snare and then put the rolls in later let's see what happens i'm gonna put the clicks back on too Starting to get a little better idea what to do there. Try recording some of that, see how it goes.
we definitely didn't do it all correct there, but that's okay. We can go back and fix it later. So, put the wrong note in there. Let's get rid of that one. Put the correct one in. So right now, these are all pretty much going to be maximum for the most part. So let's see what it sounds like here. See, anyway, I screwed that up. Let's take that one out. Oof. I missed that one, so let's add that in. Let's see what happens. Ah, that's the one I missed there. <laughs> then I put it in the wrong spot. That's okay, let's fix it. Got a little ghost one in here that wasn't supposed to be there, so I'll take that one out. Uh, there's another quiet one in there we want to bring up. Oh, another ghost note over here, so just cleaning up my mess a little bit here. Oh, adding more mess. There we go. Uh, so let's see. Let's see. Hopefully everybody's enjoying the stream so far. Let me know if you have any ideas about any of these things. If you know if you want to flex your creative muscle a little bit and say, "Hey, I was when you played this thing, I was thinking of this kind of idea, or I was thinking of this type of instrument." So feel free to put those things in if you're wanting to. Let me know. You can help form these with me. All right. So let's see. So now we have all of these together. Gotta keep an eye on my time too. Okay, 7.30, we're okay. We're doing okay. bit of funky kind of it almost sounds like it's out of out of phase but I think that's just because these are all overall a little louder than they should be so we're gonna bring the whole thing down a bit oops not like that Let's see if that maybe sits in the background a little better Some of that reverb we were talking about too really make it sound like it's in a big hall. Okay, let's see here, timpani. I've, I've got a call for timpani. Uh, let's see. Uh, we can do that. I don't know what to do with them yet. So DM Levi is an actual percussionist. Um, so maybe he can, he can lend some ideas. I, I, I want to include timpani. I really do. I'm just trying to figure out what to do with it. Um, cause they're tuned drums. So it's, uh, 
you run the risk of like being out of tune, if that makes sense. So <laughs> he's summoning kettle drums. I wish I actually don't have, I've been looking into it. I do not have a good, like I found some, some drum libraries that are amazing sounding. They're literally called cinematic drums and there's just tons of instruments. They all sound awesome. Amazing. They're like straight out of, every you know modern movie you've seen like Hans Zimmer type of you know big drums but so far all the ones I've found are upwards of 300 plus dollars so someday maybe but right now I'm uh, trying to do this a little bit more on the cheap um, that's a little over over my head of what I want to spend on this project right now but I feel like there's something out there that I just haven't found yet so I'm gonna keep looking but for now this is doing okay um, yeah. Yes, Air Laser. Get that instead of a second monitor. That's true. Though that second non monitor might be pretty good too. So, <laughs> um, so let's see here. So I think what I'm going to do, duplicate that. And what I'm going to do is fun little trick. So I'm going to put on the effects here. Uh, what was it called? I think it was called Warble, maybe. So I'm gonna put an effect on here if I can find the right one. I think it was this Warble. I did this on a different project. So basically what I can do, I can take the exact same thing that we were working with before, so the same drums. Um, I'm gonna solo it for now. So this is the original. And then now I basically have copied that onto a second track. Um, but you'll notice if I put both of them together and I don't, I take this effect off, it's going to sound really kind of, they're going to start getting in the way of each other because it's the exact same pitches or very similar pitches that are basically overriding each other. So it's just going to get really loud. Kind of sounds funky. So what I'm doing here is I'm going to put a little pitch shifter on here, which basically just takes the second one, it drops it down a little bit. So that way it's close enough, but it sounds like two snare drums that are not quite tuned exactly the same. So let's see if it sounds how I want it to. That's getting there. Um, kind of gives it that bigger sound instead of just you know a single a single drum playing. You kind of add two drums, so now all of a sudden it's like a like a section is playing. Um, and these are a little loud because there's two of them now. So I'm gonna bring those down just a hair, and let's hear what they sound like all with everything. That's okay for now, that definitely needs a little work. So I'm definitely gonna change a little bit of that up later, but I think for now it's getting us the right idea. So I'm gonna duplicate that track once again. I'm gonna delete it this time though, because now I wanna add in some bigger low drums. So I could do a bass drum. Oh, except that's got the weird thing on it. Let's delete that. Did not like that. So I could do a bass drum um, if I wanted to, uh, or as recommended, got these timpani. So I'm trying to figure out. the 
analog roll to hit. So let's see. Let's see what we can do. We're going to play around with this and see if we can get some of these lower tones in here. All right, let's see what we can do here. this a little bit, add some of this. We'll get a little bit more intricate uh, once we get into the second part. We want to kind of keep it simpler at this point. So let me clean this up a little bit because I certainly did not play that amazingly all the way through. Let's hear. Definitely got a little extra notes in here <laughs> that I missed. Okay, there's another ghost in there. Okay, I think that's all of them. So let's listen back again, see what's going on with it. All right, so there. When it changes notes, I need to have a different, to have those other notes in there so that way it changes pitch appropriately. Let's hear that again. Definitely got some notes in there I did not like, so let's see what we can do to fix them. So that one needs to change there. That note needs to disappear. There, get rid of that one. Oof. Don't like that note. Okay, so this one needs to be down here. Bring up the volume a little bit. Fun symbols. 
<laughs> Something wasn't right in here. I think we got that first section kind of cleaned up nicely. What I think I want to do is I do like what's happening there and I think I want that to continue into the next part, but I think it needs to be a little bit different. Um, let's see. All right, I'm gonna look back at this chat so I don't miss everything. All right, everybody's arguing about how many cams they have. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I, so I thought about the Morgane The Song, and this is definitely not the song, or at least not how I would have pictured it. And I think I saw DM Levi popped in here and saying, yeah, yeah, it's definitely be more, more melancholy. So that's going to be like... That's going to be a different project altogether. I really don't know what to do with that quite yet, so... Um, so yeah, that, that I think will be coming, but this certainly is not the flavor of what I think the Morgane song is. It's Morgane song is going to be very like melancholy, very sad, very longing, that sort of thing, which this, I think everybody could agree clearly is not any of those things. So, um, oh, I'm sorry. So the song, um, for anyone that has not watched our Everstorm game, uh, so Everstorm's our fifth edition game, as I was saying before, um, that we play every two, three weeks or so. Um, so my character is a not bard. He's, he's actually a fighter, but uh, plays music. Um, and DM Levi has so graciously bestowed upon my character uh, this mysterious song that was kind of given to me by a stranger. And it's got these mysterious powers that basically incapacitates just about anybody that hears it because they just get enamored by the song and just stop what they're doing, start listening, even in the middle of combat. But it seems to bring all these feelings of like sorrow and sadness, um, even though everyone agrees that the song is just beautiful, but it just brings back all these memories of sorrow and sadness and that sort of thing. So um, this does not really, <laughs> does not really fit the bill for that, but uh, I do... I, I am going to make that at some point. I just, I don't know exactly what I'm going to do there because it's it's pretty important to not only the character, but the story. So I want to make sure that I do that right. So we'll stay tuned. Things to come. <laughs> the song. So that's what that is, if, if you are wondering. Uh, okay, so let's see here. So I've got the timpani. What have I got? About 15 minutes left here. Let's see what we can get done in 15 minutes. I think I want to go ahead and put more timpani in this section, but I need to figure out how I want to do that. So let's duplicate. Delete this one. And let's go back to our drum here. Let's put some more part of this section in here. Okay, 
So that works-ish. It's pretty similar to the thing we did before. So I'm pretty confident that, that will work. Probably needs a little cleaning up, but we can go back for that in a moment. I played that one mm, sort of cleanly. So let's move this up here together. Make sure that sounds correct. <laughs> Okay, that'll work. That'll work. Oh, we are having we are having all kinds of fun going on here. <laughs> all right, so let's see here. Uh, all right, so we got that. We definitely need to put some snare in here too. I'm not sure I want to do exactly the same thing that I was doing before, but we'll see. Let's 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 kind of listen to the last section of that. Kind of see what it sounds like. I'm going to go to something a little more lively. Let's see if that works. Maybe, not sold on that yet, but let's lay it down and see how it goes. Maybe, maybe I'll like it more once I hear it a little more. So, all right, let's see here. <laughs> Okay, okay, it's, it can work. He said, I'm not quite sold on that yet, but we can, we can kind of see how it goes. Oh, we got a lot of, <laughs> we had a lot of little extras in there that we did not intend, so. All right, let's see. So let's throw that in there. Let's see what happened here. I didn't save it, that's why. Let's quantize, and then let's save that. Uh, actually, undo that. Probably gonna have to do this to 16th notes. Let's see if this sounds like garbage. <laughs> section definitely sounded like garbage um let's see here let's hear it again uh, what note is it maybe there's just supposed to be a note in between maybe that's what's missing oh 
Oh, I think I know what happened. I think I was trying to hit more than one note here, and the button got stuck. So, let's see how that goes. thing happened there I think let's do that okay I can do that that'll work so we'll put that in there and then we'll trim that down. All right. Well, I think that's a pretty good start to this. Um, like I said, I think in the next couple of episodes, uh, we'll continue to work on this. Um, so this will give me some time in between streams that I can maybe like come up with, you know, like I started this one, I kind of had the very first melody section already figured out. Um, so maybe I'll come up with the next section, kind of figure out the very, very basic piece of it, and then we can build that together on the stream. So, um, so we'll do that. Um, so this is, like I said, it definitely has potential. Um, in the meantime, uh, I'll do our plugs here. So first one I'll plug is our discord. Um, we will, yes, we're going to, we're going to raid litching hour after this too. So, um, so what we'll do, uh, if, you, if you're not in our Discord already, um, it's going to be up there here in a minute. Well, stream team first. Um, our Discord, please join it if you have not. Um, there is an entire section for Bardic Knowledge there, uh, along with all of our other shows. And there's Promote Yourself for all of our friends um, that are on the Discord as well. Um, if you have any ideas or if you thought of anything, if you have any criticisms or whatever about what we wrote here today or about the first episode, go ahead on the Bardic Knowledge section in there. Go ahead and write some things out. I'm in there intermittently. I'll definitely talk them out with you. If you have questions about things or if you think, hey, I got this idea, I'll definitely explore it and see if we can figure something out there. So feel free to do that. Um, all the things are getting linked here. So check out our stream team. Uh, actually, let me scroll all the way through here so I can see all these things at once. So uh, check out the stream, stream team, Grouch Couch, Litching Hour, uh, our newest uh, friends there on the stream team, uh, Dragons in the Dining Room. Um, check all them out. They're going to be, uh, they've got all kinds of content going on. Check out their channels. Also check out Air Laser's channel. Uh, she is our mod here. You've seen her in the chat. She's all over the place. Mod of the Millennium, Mod of the Common Era. Uh, she, she does great. She helps us out a lot. Um, also check out our YouTube channel. We are putting all of our past, uh, streams up there, uh, slowly, but surely. Um, I think all of the wisdom check, the show that is on Monday nights, um, it's kind of the talk show, uh, rain survives who's here and who's actually manning the TT two KB, uh, chat here. Um, in this chat room, uh, Dustin, they both are on that show. They run it together. They have guests pretty much every week talking about different Dungeons and Dragons or gaming type topics. Great things. Um, definitely come check them out on Mondays, uh, 10 central time. Uh, or if you want to go back and look at them, you can look at the, uh, look at the previous ones. You can watch them on YouTube or they're actually on, I believe Spotify now. So you can actually check them out as podcast form. So if you don't have time to sit and watch something, but you can listen to it in your car or while you're walking to work or whatever you're doing, um, check it out there. Uh, also we would appreciate if you could, uh, support us one of the best ways you can support us if you like what we're doing here check out our merch at redbubble uh, again it's it's uh all linked in here check out t-shirts uh there are now bardic knowledge t-shirts in there too along with wisdom check and our tt2kb um air laser has plenty of it she's got she's been checking some of that out she's been putting pictures up as it arrives and everything so really cool there too uh, let's see what else we got. Also, like I said, Discord, please join us on there. There is a link. Go ahead and grab onto that. Um, 
Yes, check out davidleepancake.com. David Lee Pancake is Rain Survive's dad, who is a 3D artist. Um, he makes absolutely fantastic stuff and has been for years. Um, taxidermy dragon heads are the big marquee thing that he does. But he's got necklaces and trinkets and like dice boxes that look like monsters. And I think now he's he's launching a Patreon as well. Uh, he's got these really cool for his, his new Patreon patrons, I guess you call them. Uh, it's like a little dragon egg that's hatching. It's super cool. He's been putting it all over his social media. So definitely go check that out. Um, in the in the chat there, you can see the TT2KB dragon as the, the coupon code uh, at checkout on his website. So definitely do that. Um, yeah, Spotify and iTunes both for the podcast. Um, let's see. Tomorrow, we are going to be showing Seven Days to Die. Uh, we've been trying to do that on Wednesday. It's a little, it's not quite as structured as this show or like Wisdom Check show. It's just kind of uh, us getting together, playing some games. Uh, we are currently been playing Seven Days to Die and all just failing at the zombie apocalypse, basically. Uh, so I'm sure number of the guys are going to be doing that tonight. I'm going to be out of town, so I won't be able to join them, but definitely check us out. Probably will be 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock uh, Central Time, so check that out. We'll definitely announce it and give you the alerts and all those sorts of things. Uh, let's see. I think that's everything. If anybody else has any others, throw them in the chat real quick before I forget. Um, but again, thank you for joining me on this. Uh, this one I know is a little different than the last one. Uh, last one was a lot more guitars, bass, drum, growly metal type stuff. Uh, this was definitely a lot more orchestra. So uh, thanks for coming on this journey. It's a little, it's different for me. It's a little bit of a kind of stumbling through it, but uh, thanks for coming on that. So uh, I think that's going to be it for me for this evening. Uh, I'm going to send us to our exit screen and then while i'm doing that everybody stick around because i am going to send us over to a raid so um actually it looks like dustin's going to do it so i will send it to our our go away uh screen and then while that's playing uh he'll set up the the raid and get it going so thanks uh appreciate it uh come come back next time i am going to try to do this every week uh or most weeks now originally i thought maybe every other week but i'm i'm really enjoying it so i think i'm gonna try to do it every week with maybe a break here and there so most likely i'll, I'll confirm this but most likely next tuesday same time uh eight o'clock central i'll be here working on the morgan theme some more so please join me uh, otherwise thanks guys we will see you next time